Science Shorts gives you speed time graphs and acceleration. For those of you doing OCR, Science GCSE, this will be topic P3, AQA will be P2, and Edexcel will be topic 15. So, in the last video, we found Bob on his way to Google's HQ to do some architectural reconfiguring. And we made a distance time graph of his journey and found that we can calculate an average speed by dividing distance by time or by calculating the gradient of the graph. If you haven't watched that yet, please click the link in the description. So now Bob needs to cheese it before the fuzz arrive. We'll document his escape by drawing a speed time graph. He first drives off at a steady speed of 15 meters per second for 10 seconds. Now, to draw this on a speed time graph, we draw a horizontal line at 15 meters a second all the way to 10 seconds. This is where people get confused though. Because it's a flat line, people often go into distance time mode and so think that the person isn't actually moving because as we all know, on a distance time graph, a horizontal line uh, means that it's actually not moving. So be careful about that. Make sure you take off your distance time hat and put on your speed time hat when dealing with these. Okay, so now the police are on Bob's tail. Pushing the NOS button in his tank helps him to accelerate to 20 meters per second in five seconds. Let's show this on the graph. So we go from 15 meters a second to 20 meters a second in five seconds like this. But oh no, calamity, a little bunny has hopped onto the road in front. Bob, being the caring type, slams on the brakes, which brings him to a halt in two seconds flat, stopping just short of bun buns. Sadly for Bob, that allows the coppers to have the drop on him, and sorry mate, there just ain't no room for vigilantes in this world. So what can we now do with this graph then? Well, kind of like the distance time graphs, we can calculate the gradients at different points. But we aren't calculating speed this time, but rather acceleration. Acceleration is equals to change in speed divided by time, or change in speed over time. You take the final speed, subtract the initial speed, and divide by how long that took. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared, which makes sense seeing as though it's a change in speed, meters per second, divided by time again, so that's meters per second per second, and we can write that as meters per second squared. Right, your turn now. Pause the video and calculate Bob's acceleration for the three parts of his journey. Let's see how you got on. Of course, while Bob's traveling at a steady speed, his acceleration is zero meters per second squared. Why? Because his change in speed is zero. He's not getting any faster, he's not getting any slower. Okay, next. Here his change in speed is 20, take away 15, so that gives us five meters per second, and that takes him five seconds. So his acceleration is five divided by five equals one meters per second squared. What about the last bit then? If you're on the ball, you would have noticed that if we do final speed, take away initial speed, we get zero, take away 20, and that gives us minus 20 meters per second. If we divide that by two seconds, we get minus 10 meters per second squared. That's something to be aware of, that a negative acceleration means that the person is decelerating or slowing down. By the way, in later units, you'll find that that's not always the case, but for now, it'll do. But that's not all. It turns out that calculating the area under the graph gives us the distance traveled. Spooky. To do this, you must split the area into rectangles and triangles. The fewer you have, the better. For example, I'd split up this graph like this. You multiply the sides of a rectangle to find its area, and multiply the sides of a triangle, and then divide by two to find its area. Then add them all up. Okay, all yours, pause the video here and calculate the distance he traveled. Let's see how you got on with that. So here are all the areas for my triangles and rectangles. Add them all up and we get this distance here. Well done if you got that right. So don't forget to like this video and leave a comment for what science topic you'd like to see sketch next.